Hello, everyone. Welcome to Creativity Hive's weekly program. This is episode 120. My name is Miriam Haugen. I'm part of the Creativity Hive team. We help creatives learn to make impactful storytelling videos through one-on-one -on -one teaching and live group coaching. And very happy this week to have Eric Addison back with us, sharing a bunch of things about uh, AI and new stuff in Premiere Pro. So let's bring Eric. Hi, Eric. Hey. <laughs> and I'm going to bring Neil on too, since he's the one that with all the man with all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know how well I'll do with all of his questions, but I will, I will do my best. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, for anybody watching, uh, when they came out with the, the last, especially the last like two or three versions of the public beta for the 24, not zero something or other public beta uh they started adding in more of the uh uh you know what people frequently call ar or ai artificial intelligence and it's really better described as machine learning processes and um they really got some of those whipped up in an amazing period of time and and quite a few of them made the cut to get brought into the uh 24.0 uh, public release when it shipped at the uh, just before Max, and uh, Eric here was at Max, and then uh, you know Miriam and I left our building of forty some years occupation, and um, the reason why that you see me in such a fuzzed out situation right now is because <laughs> I'm down in our uh, family room, which has all of my video production crap thrown all over the room. I mean, the pool table is covered like three foot deep with camera gear and lights and everything, and as is the floor. And I don't have any place to put it yet. And it's going to be maybe another two, three, four months before I do. So I've got this place I can kind of sort of work, but I haven't really had a chance to dive into this, which bums my load immediately. So. And heavily. But Eric went to max in la and he especially focused on some of the classes with a lot of this machine learning stuff so eric what all is the cool stuff we can do with that now well you know i think there's a it was first of all it was very cool to get to go to max i don't get to go to max that often and so i somebody asked me recently like you know oh do you go every year and i thought well, no you know i said I, Actually, I haven't been since 2016 uh, when it was here in San Diego. Um, so it was really cool to be able to get to go and, and kind of experience it. And if, and if people are out there who've never been to Adobe Max, it is it is something to definitely check out once and see how you like it. I mean, after this year, I'm definitely going to try to go back, you know, as often as I can. So, um, you know, and, and Adobe's not paying me to say that, but it's just sort of my, you know, my creativity you know, persona just really finds a good home there. And it's it's a really incredible place to be, um, especially if you use the Adobe tools. But all that being said, yeah, I did do I, I, I don't know that I took a lot of classes regarding AI, but they're definitely, you know, it was hard to get away from AI at max. Um, and and a lot of the, the, the products are, are moving in that direction. And it's, it's incredible how quickly Adobe is well, everybody is really is moving into that space and how quickly things are changing. And and it wasn't so as much as the 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 tools that we have now that are AI you know powered are incredible, the stuff they showed that they're working on was even more incredible to me. It's like, wow, you know, we we're gonna be, you know, in three to five years if they develop and they release some of the tools that they showed, I mean, what we'll be able to do you know, inside of our apps, you know, is just like unbelievable. Like I, if you'd have told me 10 years ago that I have this ability to do this. I would have said no way, but it's, it's all out there and, and it's coming, you know, it really is going to be pretty incredible. Well, of course, one of the things that uh, gets used a lot and talked about a lot is the uh, transcription and, and uh, uh, text-based editing process. But They've done some things with audio too. And so, so why don't you give us a, a presses of the various things that they have now 
that are available in the standard shipping release for Premiere 2024? Well, so right now in the shipping version um, in 24, you know, the big thing, I don't know that there isn't the audio tools are that you're probably alluding to, you know, the speech enhancement is still in beta. Okay. Um, so that's still there, but the, but yeah, the, the text, the, the text-based editing that's currently in there is amazing. I mean, I use it now on almost every project that I do. And I mean, it's, you know, I don't like to use like game changing, but it really is. It speeds up my workflow so much in, in how quickly I'm able to get rough cuts out now and, and work. And then, you know, the, one of the things that they've, they've just, they've released in the current version, which is the ability to get rid of, you know, pauses um, in speaking and then in the beta, which I think, and which will be probably in, I'm thinking probably the, the next version out or the version after that 24.1 or 24.2, I'm guessing, um, will be removing um, ums and ahs from people talking that it can, you know, it can hear all of those. And I think that's in beta now. You can go play with it. Well, know, and, and yeah. one of the things that's kind of, of nifty is I've um, uh, Matt Stegner, who is uh, I think I think he replaced Duran Greaves as uh, head of uh, audition, which is basically the sound app and the sound inside Premiere, um, suggested to someone that um, uh, they were saying I, I, I heard they had this um ah replacement, but I haven't it, it's not there. And he suggested, well, just take your project into 24 beta uh, and uh, try it. And if it works, fine, because you can have a project, open it in the beta and try out the new things there and just go back to the standard public release on it just fine. It, you know, it's no problem. And, and the guy posted back a few minutes later and it was kind of a, oh, holy crap, jeepers, what the heck? Man, this is awesome. Yeah. And uh, because he had like an hour and a half uh, uh, lecture that um, he was having to transcribe because he, he does this for university for all of their online stuff. And, oh, this one uh, uh, prof was, um, uh, well, um, uh, yeah, you see, if you take um, uh, this and um, uh, and, and then you, you do this, um, and so the guy would have an hour and a half lecture, and it would take him four hours to cut this thing down to about the 25 or 30 minutes he actually was talking. And he did that, and all of a sudden, bang oh, he had 30 minutes of uh, uh, thing right off the bat. He was just absolutely thrilled. So yeah, some of these things, go ahead and, and see if they work in, in the beta. Yeah. Well, I, of course, I'm not an editor really, but the when I do edit, what am I mostly doing? I'm trying to cut out all those gaps and, and ums and ahs from like one of our broadcasts to get something shorter. So that just really appeals to me. <laughs> well, and, and I, a lot of my recording these days is actually doing tutorials and presentations like for mixing light or whatnot. And I have to tell you, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be saying something, you're oh, I've misspoken. And so, yeah, we'll screw that. And I'll, I'll go again. Well, if you're having to scrub through and find all those places to cut out, you know, like, <laughs> you know, just shoot me now. I, yeah. by the way, I hate doing string outs and rough cuts. I hate it thoroughly. Well, all of a sudden, yeah, you, you just bring it in, transcribe it and uh, on inscript what on ingest and um so yeah I, I just go in and, and immediately do the cut by that oh my god is that nice it keeps my keeps me sane keeps you know miriam and alive and and the dogs healthy and happy and everything <laughs> that's always so. good yes well the the thing and, and i've mentioned this to the the team the premiere team the thing that i want like you know okay what you gave us is great but for 2.0 what I really want is I so like right now you can get that transcript, you can export out a, a text file. And I usually convert that to a Word doc just because it makes it easier for my yeah. corporate clients to to interface with that. And then they and what I ask them is just to sort of strike out the stuff they don't want, you know, and then send it back to me. Um, and then and then it's easy to build from that. But what I really want is them to be able to make all the edits and then send me back another Word doc import that word doc into premiere and then 
it will automatically look at the text in the Word doc, look at the text in the transcription panel, and then boom, make my cut for me right away. I mean, to me, I that doesn't seem you know that far fetched. Being with the tech that's there, you know, I'm sure the, the programmers would be like, well, you know, that's going to take a little bit of work. But that w- once I have that functionality, oh man, there oh, are geez. a lot of people requesting that. Um, yeah, and, and especially when you're doing things that uh, involve uh, you know whether it's techno jargon or just something that has some kind of specific language to it um, the ability to um, you know to take it out then correct it and bring that corrected document back in and have and be able to just have that immediately replace the uh, uh, the previous oh, yeah. one that's you know that that's definitely uh, going to make a big difference in making all of this work better we there was actually and, and I don't know if you remember this or not but going back to the cs4 days remember when they first had that that transcription ability inside of it and then you had the ability to go in and actually import in a corrected version i don't remember how it worked but i know that i had clients sort of correct things for me with like a lot of like you know science jargon and stuff like that and then somehow you were able to import that in and then it would correct it would sort of realign it and correct all that you know, and so it, you were able to do that at one point. Um, well, uh, and that was actually up through, I think, to, uh, CS6. And yeah. and you could take the uh, transcription and you could go into Story, which was another app that they had that time for, which is basically yep. um, uh, a script writing mm-hmm. app. You could take your transcription into Story, modify it in Story, and then re-import it into Premiere, and it was all fixed. Yep. So, yeah, we had that with CS6, and then they came out with the first CC version, and it was gone. Yep. Oh. I And I remember asking somebody about why they pulled it, and the reason I was given was that nobody was using it because the the transcription, you know, was not – was so inaccurate that very few people used it. And I said, well – I said, but it gets it most, a lot of it it gets right if you have a, you know, good sounding audio. But, but I, I always felt like that, I think it was technology that they sort of sub rented from someone else. And I think the deal with that ended and that was kind of, and they didn't want to pay for it. You know, I, I, I think that's actually the, probably the better um, <laughs> uh, explanation for it. Yeah. Uh, it goes quite frequently. Um, uh well, I, you, you've probably had the same thing, because I know you, you go to NAB a lot and, and these kinds of things. And there's times when you talk with the engineers on something where they give you a statement and they're looking at you like, OK, this is and you you know, it's different. OK, this is the line that I'm supposed to be saying here now. <laughs> yeah, it's almost and, like they need and to you pull go, out a little sheet of paper that they read the official statement to you. You know, and then kind of give you a wink afterwards. And and you're and you look at it and you're going, yeah. And we both know <laughs> that, that that's the uh, official line. But uh, you know, and and uh, uh, you know, I, occasionally you'll be standing there and you'll get to hear uh, something. Oh, Christine Steele's watching. Oh my God! Hi, Christine. Um, hey, Christine. Yeah. Oh man, she's. Anybody out there, if you ever have a chance to take an editing class from Christine Steele, take it. I don't care if you have to fly halfway around the planet. That lady is the fastest freaking editor I have ever seen in operation. And I've watched Yarla work on something. I've watched a number of these other people work on something. Holy Toledo, man, that, that, wow, she is amazing. Okay, this is a great, a great quote. Premiere Pro had this way before anyone else. And when they took it away, I was only midway through editing a 13 part <laughs> doc series for PBS. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I feel the pain. Oh, I, I would have been screaming, throwing things at my monitor. Oh my God. I'd have been. Case in point, why you don't upgrade mid project. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of course, one of the other changes they did back then that I shouldn't bring up because it just adds time is when they, uh, uh, a previous program had decided to kill uh, speed grade, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I made myself rather unpopular with uh, uh, staffers over that 
which I think was still, uh, in fact, has been shown to have been one of the more stupid things that they have done in their entire CC run. Um, but uh, yeah, it, <laughs> but we it, digress. <laughs> yeah, but we digress. So back to AI. Let's keep Christine happy. Oh, well, Christine, by the way, was I, I know was at Max also. So if she wants to kick in here with some comments uh, at, at any time, she's welcome to because we can see it on the screen and uh, 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 that'd be great. But so, so yeah, we got the text based editing and um, and then they've got some uh, 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 oh, geez. Um, that audio stuff that they're 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 doing the enhanced speech thing. The enhanced speech, yeah, that tool. I will tell you, I've used that. So I used, I started using it when it was on the website with a couple like Adobe Podcast, and you would upload your audio to it, and then it would clean it up, and then you know you download a file. Um, so that's now included inside of Premiere. Um, you know, and what's great about it now is that you actually have a slider that you can kind of adjust to sort of clean up um you know some audio and i could actually show that um i have so we just showed that at the uh, san diego premiere pro user group that i run um but let me let me load up the beta version of premiere and i can quickly kind of show you hopefully it's all still here let me load that up here um but yeah that tool i had a project last year or this well, it's kind of spanned last year into this year and it was a corporate project and we had to do remote interviews with people. Um, and it was all through, um, all, no, not, not Zoom, but I think we did it through Riverside, I think is what we did. But nobody's audio through these remote interviews was at all good. Um, it was all people just using their laptops with the microphones built into it. And the audio quality was, like I said, crap, but running it through that Adobe podcast, which is now enhanced speech, it made it sound like they were on a mic. I mean, the client was blown away by how good it sounded, as was I. Um, so yeah, it's that that tech is just going to be huge. You know, when you have audio that, you know, for whatever reason you don't get good audio. My fear is that people are just going to not worry about audio anymore, thinking that you can just apply this and that'll be that. You know, always good get good audio, but but you know, for those times when something happens, because I mean, stuff happens on set all the time. Yeah. If your audio just stinks, this is going to be, you know, the thing to have, the tool to use. Yeah, that, more... that that kind of thing can be uh, uh, amazing. Well, I I know um, I was in a, in a brief discussion here a few days ago with someone who uh, works in uh, broadcast news who was going, they were uh at the you know doing a live uh at uh the side of something and all of a sudden there was a huge noise in the background uh over that you know really took over and you, you couldn't hardly hear what they uh because they were interviewing someone and you couldn't hardly hear what they were saying and that was really the most crucial thing they had and the person had to run off so they couldn't have them redo it and they were going oh thinking, oh, man, we get back to the studio. There's just, just not going to be much there. But, of course, you know, they're apparently I would have guessed they're uploading it from the truck or whatever and uh, got a word back about 10 minutes later. Oh, no, I was able to run that through uh, uh, through the cleanup and and, and uh, new stuff in Premiere. No, that's fine. You know, yeah, you know, I got him. And, you know, they're going, I couldn't hear him. <laughs> and I was standing there. I was standing there holding the mic out in front of the guy's face, and I couldn't hear him. You know. Yeah. And uh, but so it, it, yeah, okay. It it wasn't great sound because you did have a fair amount of the other noise come through in that case. But it was definitely apparently low enough so that you could hear the guy talking. And at that point, that just saved that. Too. Yeah. You got to grab that, Miriam. No. <laughs> Nope, I'm going, it, oh, I forgot to turn the ringer off. Um, it's the old, so, uh, my good friend, potential spam. Oh, <laughs> man. So, so did you, I had said you should, you should have something ready to share. Do you want to share something? Yeah, so I can share the, how that enhanced sound works. Let me share my screen here. Uh, share screen. Okay. Uh, entire screen. 
we'll definitely want to share audio. All right, so let me let me get this up here. Where is it? So it's right here. So can you guys see my screen? Uh, now we can. Yep. Okay. So this was this was just the the mic on the camera uh, when we were shooting this interview. Um, you can kind of hear how it sounds. For about thirty years now, but I can still recall my early pediatric training. And one of the really so you can hear, you know, it's recording from across the room kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So you so using the enhanced speech, if I click that on. Um, it should let's click enhance so it's going to do its thing here and something to keep in mind too that this is an effect so it's not like processing and creating a new file that lives on on your system somewhere it's literally just an effect inside your effects control meaning for audio folks if you send out your audio to like somebody else that does it in pro tools or whatever else and you use this it's going to sound just like we heard it when they get it. It's not going to be cleaned up. So you have to use like the render and replace um, tool to, okay. to actually create a file. But you can hear now, if I play it back, let's go back a bit. Development for about 30 years now, but I can still recall my early pediatric training. And one of the really interesting. So, I mean, that's that's usable. <laughs> you know, you can hear yeah. the difference. But fun parts. I turn it off. And for about 30. Let's turn this off years now but i can still recall my early pediatric training and one of the really yeah really interesting fun parts was being so you know that's amazing and you've got this mix amount over here that will allow you to sort of dial it back so as you're playing it i can kind of go through it drug development for about 30 years now but i can still recall my early pediatric training and one of the really interesting fun parts was being you, know, you have to kind of find that that line right up to where it starts to get a little you know it starts to go into the frequency in the voice and gets a little chunky and stuff like that. But you can see, you know, you find that sweet spot in our neurology rotations, but that was 30 years. And that's, you know, that's perfect. So yeah, it's in a, this, this tool is going to be such an awesome addition to premiere once they get it in there. Oh, okay. So it is in the beta. Yeah. It's only yeah. in the beta right now. So yeah. So if you do have things that you need to do, Neil's suggestion about, you know, having the beta installed, open it up, you know, clean up your audio, create those, uh, like I said, create like a render and replace for the audio file. Um, you know, you can just right click on it, choose render and replace, and that'll actually create a separate audio clip that you can then bring into, um, the 24.0 right now. And then, you know, or if you have an older version and then you can drop that in and use that and that's that's the best way to use it now if you're not going to work entirely in the beta. So pretty awesome. Yeah. Very cool. The one of the other things that I could show you that I think is you know going to be a big game changer for me using AI. Let me go. Let me get rid of this and let's go to the release version of Premiere. Um, let's see. No, I don't need to save changes. Let's go over here. So, so this is an interview that we shot uh, for a project, and you know we we were kind of limited in where we could shoot, so we kind of picked this spot. But when we were filming, the, the client kind of came over to me and said, "Hey, you know, we don't like this white car over the guy's shoulder." And I said, "Well, you know, I think I think this was after Max and after I got these tools. I said, I, you know what? I think I can fix that if you want." I said, "What would you like out there?" She goes, "Well." You know anything other than that she goes you know i said well how would a nice park sound and she said oh yeah she goes can you do that and i said i don't know let me see so the workflow is super simple so you got your still frame here you create a still frame inside or you got your your frame here create a still frame from premiere so i'll just create a still from this i'll just save it to my desktop then we're going to go over to photoshop which i happen to have open um, let's import that in. You can find it here. Um, I did save it, didn't I? Yes, right here. So that's my still frame. And I'm going to unlock it. I'm like, and then I'm just going to highlight, or I'm going to kind of box around this area. 
And then I'm going to go up to, let's see, I don't remember where it is here, where my generative fill is. I just forget this. Generative fill. And I'm just going to type in park with trees. <laughs> Have some nice trees. And then generate. So it'll do its thing. And we'll see how we do here. Da, 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 da. But and you can see over here it's generating three different versions for me. But ultimately it's going to uh come up with something. Boom. So <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That looks pretty good. I like that. Although that, that sign might be a little distracting. Ooh. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's it. That's it. We're going to go with that. So then you just have to now all it's really done is created just a layer. Uh huh. So I'm just going to save this as a Photoshop file. I will just save it to my desktop there for sake of finding it easily. And I'll come back into Premiere. Let's just import that in. Um, let's desktop here. Oh, there it is. And then all I really need is just the individual layers. I just need the park with trees. And then I just drop that on. And I might need to blend it a little bit, you know, in here. So, cause yeah, it kind of the, it's looking a little bit different. <laughs> You know, but I could probably find a way just to color correct that and, you know, with Lumetri or something like that and make it blend a little better. But, but you can see, you know, and I was careful when we shot this. I play with some brightness and contrast here and see if that, uh, yeah, there you go. No uh, one is going to notice the difference, Eric. I'm really engaged in the role. Huh? No one's going to notice the difference. Well, right, they're going to be focused on the person anyway, but seriously, even if they were paying attention to it, it looks great. Very yeah, beautiful. I mean, yeah, just a little bit of a little bit of color correction, it blends completely in. And like I said, I knew, you know, going into it that I had to keep that area sort of free for it. So I kind of told Tal and I said, I told the guy, I said, you know, don't move around too much for me, kind of keep the space open because I had in my head that I was going to test this workflow out. And, you know, boom showed it to the client they're like that is amazing and i said yes yes it is so so yeah i mean it, that kind of tool you know is is just like game changing stuff i mean as long it's it, it reminds me of the old you know i'm a big special effect visual effect nerd um but it reminds me of the old matte painting days you know of of you know i remember seeing all the star wars you know behind the scenes in the original trilogy and how they would create these matte paintings and just sort of you know, put the actors into the map painting. That's right. kind of the same principle here, you know? Very cool. Now, where did you go? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we lost the, Eric. Oh, am I gone? You're gone. We're, we hear you. We can't see we you. We hear you, but we can't see you. Really? Okay, hold on. Let me stop sharing here. I don't know where I went. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> No, that's okay. Let me, oh, your browser has lost connection to your camera. <laughs> there we okay. go. Ah, you're in a parallel dimension. Let me let me click on this. There no, we go. No. You're there. I'm back. Um, so yeah. So I mean that you know, and the next the next thing for me is having that functionality inside of Premiere. You know, I don't want to have to go to Photoshop. I want to be able to do all that inside of Premiere. And um, did Photoshop blur the edges? No, it didn't. Um, so that's why I did a little bit of color correction, you know, just to sort of adjust for it. Um, you know, so no, it didn't. But you could do that. You could go in. I'm not a Photoshop expert, funny enough. I know Premiere like the back of my hand, but Photoshop I'm still kind of, I futz around in. And I was amazed when whatever I do works in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, so, but no, it, but I think you can adjust it to sort of feather the edges and that will help it blend better. So, um, but no, that one of the things they showed at max was the ability to go in and paint out moving video. It's a, it's a thing they're working on where they, they showed a demo of a guy in a, in a, like a, wearing a white shirt with a jacket and the shirt, it, it was a button down and it was 
kind of unbuttoned, no tie. And he walks down these steps and comes out of sunlight into shade. And so what they did is they typed in a, a generative fill command of add a blue tie. And they just highlighted the area of his shirt, you know, where the jacket was. And, you know, it added a tie to it. And it accounted for the sunlight shift, you know, from going from sunlight into shade. Yeah. That's you know, and moving with the shirt, incredible. you know. And I think they changed the color of the tie. And so, I mean, that kind of stuff's amazing. And, yeah, once once we have that kind of functionality inside Premiere and then the ability to just create, I mean, I don't know about you all, but every once in a while I have to do, I have to find stock footage of things, right. you know, it's like, and you spend hours trying to find that one stock footage shot that's a, that has all the pieces that you need. I mean, imagine just being able to type in right. what you need and then boom, it's there. Have it create that stock image for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's going to be, you know, that's, I can't even fathom that. I mean, that's going to be just so awesome. And you yeah, know, maybe not so great for the stock, the people that are doing stock, but right. On the other hand, they're you know nobody's really making a living doing stock anymore. <laughs> there, there was yeah. a, uh, I don't know, probably what about the 2019 uh, 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 Vegas NAB show. Uh, one of their speakers was a guy that was talking about stock because he's a big stock producer. And so he made his presentation. You know, these things are about 18 minutes of program and you get about three minutes of, of questions and then they move on so that they get ready for the next person because they start every half hour. Right. So one of the questions he gets is someone that wants to know. So you're a big stock guru. Could you share with us about how much a month you're making from stock? Oh, well, most months normally about two to four hundred dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it was a very quiet place because he talked about he had like you know four or five thousand things out on on four or five different stock sites, and he's getting two to four hundred a month. Well, he's doing it for the love, obviously, not for the money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, whoa, um, yeah. It gives him makes him makes him feel good to know that. And, and that was back then. Uh, from what my understanding is, it's it's just gotten getting harder and harder to make anything off stock. Um, yeah, yeah. It seemed like a few years ago, it was kind of this. I, I had a friend that was doing it, and he had a um, like an eight. I don't want to call him an agent, but we'll call him an agent because there. Was, I don't know what else to call him, but a guy that was like his whole job was to you know aggregate this out to all the different stock sites, you know, and then and then he took a cut of whatever you know, was made from it because he was the one kind of updating it. He did all the keywords and all that kind of stuff. So basically my friend just would upload footage and this guy would, you know, get it on all the stock sites. And yeah, I don't think, I don't think my buddy ever made a lot of money from it, but yeah, but you know, but it's, I don't see those going away. I think there'll always be a need for, you know, stock footage sites and things like that. But I think the, you know, this is going to be for when you, you know, when you need something, yeah. You remember, remember the, Remember the video that someone made, you know, you know, uh, you know, we got that B-roll, you know, and there's that one line in there where they kind of like, if you watch, you know, the guy says, you know, I need a exit, da, 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 I need all this stuff. And he goes, no, that's too specific. That's not B-roll, you know, and this is, this is going to be the kind of tool for when you need that specific thing, you know? Yeah. So, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I need a castle with orange painted crenellations. <laughs> see that's not that's not b-roll that's too specific so so, so any, anything else at max that stuck yeah. out to you um let's see what other things that i see so there was that um I'm trying to remember now it seems i mean max was like a month away but it feels like it feels like two months right now because it's been kind of crazy um so there was that there was there was audio they did show some other audio stuff there that was kind of amazing in that it was able to take um like take take your voice and then dub your voice into other languages uh, but still keep the sound of your voice hmm. so that would I think be they, interesting. yeah you know, I, think they call I i was just here that uh heard that uh Meta is uh, 
you, if you have run, are running a political ad, I think it was only with political ads that you, if you use any AI at all, you have to post a di disclaimer. But mm. uh, at any rate, yeah, yeah, the, you know, I mean that that that's the downside to all these wonderful tools is that the possible misuse. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I, I I don't know if you remember, but the last Max I went to, which was 2016, like I said earlier, that's where they showed Project Voco. And if you remember what that was, um, it was basically the ability to sample, I think, like 15 minutes of anybody's voice, and then you could have it say whatever you wanted it to say. And they And the example that they showed, probably not wisely, but they used President, then President Obama's voice. And they, you know, had him saying things that, you know, from the speech and changing it up. And, you know, that I didn't go over very well at that time. You yeah. Know, all you had to do it. was it, it put it on the screen. It, it put that, uh, you know, a transcription of what they were saying. And you could just go in and edit that transcription and then play it back. And they were saying whatever it was you edited it. And, yeah, the whole room. I, yeah, I was at that one. And the whole room was just going. <laughs> first it was amazing and the second thing was it was pretty obvious that holy uh wow that could be problematic Being misused, yeah yeah, yeah it's scary. but it, all... you know, the, the funny thing though is thinking back about that moment now and we look at what we can do now with like deep fakes and other things it's like that seems so innocent compared to the the craziness that we can do now it's like you know but but yeah you know, the, the potential for misuse of all these tools is something to keep in mind. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much for, for sharing. And uh, oh, by the way, Eric, uh, just to make sure you, you, you caught that uh, Christine wanted to uh, know uh, uh, to get put on uh, your mailing list for anything going on with your uh, uh, pug group. So, uh, okay. Yes. I will reach out to Christine and let her know that I'm going to try to get her to present um at some point next year because yeah she's she's one of those who knows like you know everything in premiere yeah. so you know i i was a, a teaching assistant at a max <laughs> where christine was teaching and you know of course as a ta you you get the uh uh the pdf file with their uh presentation ahead of time so that you can uh, hopefully practice and be able to do stuff on it, which I really needed when I was working because I also did some uh, TAs for uh, After Effects classes and uh, my After Effects skills are like your Photoshop skills. I can do a few things in there, but I'm not someone that just goes in there like like Mo, our partner, does and just goes, what? Does all this cool stuff, you know? And um, But Christine had this thing where she was going to have people um, make three changes in the keyboard shortcuts panel and then was going to be using those in editing turn around using them in editing and i was looking at, at the other tas and we're all going oh my god this is, we're gonna it's gonna be a busy day oh <laughs> i you know I, I i think i may have helped one person that hour and a half class yeah you know, and a couple of guys didn't christine was such an incredible teacher she she was so aware of what was going on in the room that um, she'd be looking and she'd just see the faces start doing something and she would go back and, and revisit something she had just said, make sure everybody was brought along. And so not hardly anybody missed up. And she just took the class along with her and added a tempo that was actually breathtaking. Um, so, uh, you know, it was kind of fun. But, you know, at another time while she was getting ready for it, I was up there talking with her before class and she was, she was, working away in her laptop and she's going, I hope you don't mind, but I, I got to keep working at this job because I've, I've got to get it out by, you know, like this afternoon kind of thing. And so she's talking with me. She's laying string outs on a timeline and is going down and is cutting them and shortening things up and tightening up, throwing some audio stuff back on. Well, she's, and she's just sitting there talking with me while her fingers are just going like crazy on this thing. And I'm watching and going, <laughs> if that was the only thing I was doing, I couldn't have done it anywhere near that fast and precise and she was talking to me and clearly paying attention it was like yeah well that's a good lady scary a, a good lead in to uh stay tuned folks We're, we'll see if we can't get uh christine on this on the show oh yeah yep. that, oh. That'd be worthwhile. 
Thank you. Let's say goodbye, folks. Bye-bye. See ya.